The United States should not delay in leading a global coalition to take out ISIS with overwhelming force. Militarily, we need to intensify our efforts in the air and on the ground. While air power is essential, it cannot bring the results we seek. The United States, in conjunction with our NATO allies and more Arab partners, will need to increase our presence on the ground. After spending a good portion of this campaign trying to distance himself from his brother's legacy, Jeb Bush, embracing the Bush name and the Bush doctrine in his latest speech today at the Citadel in Charleston, South Carolina, as he calls for an increase in ground troops in the Middle East as he wants the U.S. to lead a coalition effort to fight ISIS. Great place to bring in today's roundtable. With us now, Chelsea Henry, the chair of the Republican Diversity Coalition, and also with us, Newsmax contributor Kevin Broderick, who we like to call K-Bro. Thanks for being here, guys. Great to be here, Jay Bach. All right. Well, let's, I uh, love it. We'll have to come up with some Chelsea. We don't want to make you feel left out. All right. So, Kevin, let's start with you. Jeb Bush, as I mentioned, has spent a, a, a very good portion of his campaign. Now, just now. Uh, trying to distance himself. I think we're having some audio issues. With from Chelsea. from we'll from his brother's out. time in the White House. Yep. But now it appears that he realizes his only way to rise from the bottom of the polls is to fully embrace the Bush doctrine. Do you think that's what he's doing here? I don't think that's what he's doing because this is a different scenario, scenario altogether. I mean, ISIS is an existential threat. Uh, just ask Diane Feinstein, who's one of the lead Democrats on foreign policy issues. Um, she realizes it's out of control. It is out of control. And I don't think ground troops, it doesn't have to be an and or situation. It doesn't have to be a couple little uh, air raids that Obama's doing or another Iraq. I think that you can do this with less troops, uh, more specialized troops, more specialized training and more, more, you know, more intelligence related. We are going to need troops on the ground to defeat ISIS. There's no doubt about that. But I think we can build a coalition to do it a la uh, Gulf War I. All right, Gulf War One. So maybe embracing the first Bush doctrine. Chelsea, I know you are a Jeb Bush supporter. What do you think about That's his speech right. today? I think that he's heading in the right direction. You know, similar to what Kevin was just saying. I think an in-between medium between the airstrikes and troops on the ground. My brother is a Marine, and when he signed up and decided to make the ultimate sacrifice, it was to, you know, fight all enemies, domestic and abroad. And so at this point, it's important for us as Americans to realize that the threat of ISIS is a threat against the United States, is a threat against the world and what we stand for, because they want to take over. That's, that's quite simple. You know, when you think about terrorists, they want to take over. They want to be in control. They want to rule. And so it is time for us to, you know, look at this wake-up call and not let there be another incident here on U.S. soil before we take the action to protect our country and to protect our allies. Kevin, though, do you think that this will work for him in the long run? I do. I think that this is a good policy for him. I mean, look, the, it's an obvious choice put in front of us. Either you do what Obama's done, which is to Nothing. blame Republicans and then sort of, you know, do half measures, band-aid measures on, on things that come up, or you take the lead on it and show American leadership and show that we're going to defeat you and annihilate you. You know, we can't go soft on ISIS because they don't go soft on any of the people that they attack. So right. we really need to go after them. But at the same time, he's kind of going against the grain when he talks about welcoming in Syrian refugees, which some believe that will hurt him. Chelsea, what are your thoughts? I think when you look at the data, when you look at the process that comes in, yeah, so there you look at the conservative base. I've been monitoring Facebook over the past few days, and there are a lot of conservative Republicans who don't want to see the refugees come here. But let's look at the facts. You know, despite how you may feel about a particular group of people, let's look at the facts. Let's look at the statistics. And of the 2,200 that's maybe come in since March of 2013, 2% of them have been combat men, you know, men in combat age range. And so let's look at who we're bringing in. Let's actually look at the process. And so I challenge people on both sides before you get into a, you know, what side that you're going to fall down on the issue, do the research. And based off of the research I've done, you know, I can see both sides of the issue, but I can definitely see why the governor has decided not to take this harsh stance that many of the other governors have taken. Yeah, things are getting pretty hawkish out there on the GOP campaign trail. Uh, you know, we can t play a clip right now of Marco Rubio wrapping Ted Cruz a little bit, because Jeb Bush also brought up the metadata surveillance program from the NSA today. He supports that, and so does Marco Rubio. Let's take a listen. At least two of my colleagues in the Senate aspiring to the presidency, uh, Senator Cruz in particular, have voted to weaken the U.S. intelligence programs just in the last month and a half. We are vulnerable. What happened in Paris could happen in a major American city at any moment, at any time. 
We only have time for one more to answer from each of you. We'll start with you, Chelsea. Has Marco Rubio kind of outfoxed Ted Cruz on this issue of national security? Yes. All right, Kevin? I agree, yes. All right, we're going to come right, right back with Chelsea and Kevin with uh, answers that are a little bit longer than one word <laughs> right after this commercial break. Guys, stick around. We'll be right back with you. Thanks. And when we come back, Secretary of State John Kerry compared the Paris attacks in a similar manner to that sent some GOP ca presidential candidates into a rage. See what he said. That has everyone so fired up. Stay with us. And coming up after today's roundtable, we'll also take a closer look at how the candidates fare and some of the newest polls out there. Find out who the big winner is and who the big loser is and where their poll numbers are right now. And there's still time to weigh in. We want to get to your viewer comments coming up as well. Reach out to us, newsmax.com slash comments. You can reach us at Newsmax now on Twitter and reach out to us on Facebook as well, newsmax.com slash Newsmax now. Your viewer comments coming up later in the show. There's something different about what happened from Charlie Hebdo, and I think everybody would feel that. Uh, there was a sort of particularized focus and perhaps even a legitimacy uh, in terms of, uh, uh, not a legitimacy, but a, but a rationale that you could attach yourself to somehow and say, okay, they're really angry because of this or that. That was Secretary of State John Kerry saying that the Charlie Hebdo attack had rationale compared to the Paris attacks. Let's bring back our roundtable. And rejoining us is Chair of the Republican Diversity Coalition, Chelsea Henry, also with us, Newsmax contributor Kevin Broderick. Thanks for sticking around. Also Thank interesting you. to point out, these are probably the only two people in America who actually answer one-word questions with one word, so we want to thank them for that. <laughs> well, now, before we dive into our conversation, I want to take a listen to what what Chris Christie had to say in response to John Kerry's statements there. He, he needs to get some sleep and shut up is what he needs. That's disgraceful. I mean, Kevin, I, I know you guys are, are both Republicans, but can you give us any insight whatsoever into what the heck John Kerry was talking about? That's it's absolutely ludicrous. I mean, the idea that drawing a cartoon and exercising free speech so could, could somehow be a, a death sentence and justifiable death sentence. I mean, this is how barbarians think and giving them an <clears throat> out on that is, is insane. So I, there's no defense of John Kerry's statement. And I know his spokesman came out and said that the Charlie Hebdo killing was uh, despicable, but a little too late, uh, you know, a day late, dollar short on that. Uh, this goes back to a, an ideolo ideology of the Obama administration, Obama himself, which is basically, you know, America has to make up for hundreds of years of evil imperialism, and we're always the bad guys. We need to apologize, and a lot of this was brought upon ourselves, and uh, it's just a sad state. We need actual leadership in Washington, and we're not getting it. There is no ISIS plan, um, and when you look at statements like this, it just goes back to that whole lead from behind mentality of when you leave from behind, it means someone else is leading. And sadly, that's what's happening here. You have France partnering up with Russia to do airstrikes. The U.S. should be on top of that. Well, Chelsea, you know, a lot of Democrats have, have made hay about the way this uh, Republican rhetoric could be used by ISIS to uh, help them in their recruitment efforts. But don't you think the same can be said about John Kerry's statements? John Kerry's statements, when I heard them this morning, I, I, I kind of just shook my head because it's, the loss of a life for any reason is a tragedy, a tragedy. And to know that in both of these incidents that he's referring to, that these lives were taken at the hands of someone else um, is a tragedy as tragedy as well. And so when we look at, you know, from the Republican side, from the Democratic side, um, we we have to get back to the issue and that is we have to fight terrorism we have to continue to combat that um, here and abroad and like Kevin said you know this just we can't continue to do nothing because that's not keeping the lives of Americans and our allies safe okay I'm gonna depart from what everybody else is saying because I think what Kerry had was a and, and maybe Chrissy has a point I think he maybe needed more sleep we've all been there uh, I think he may have been having a foot in mouth moment there where what he was trying to say is not condoning it, but understanding why Charlie Hebdo was attacked. They ran cartoons that some people found offended, offensive of the Muslim faith, especially these 
radical Muslims. Here, he, they couldn't understand why these people were being attacked. I think he used poor choice of words, no doubt. I will agree with you. But I think that is what he was trying to say, and clearly, he didn't say it correctly. And if that was what he was trying to say, I, I see that side of the aisle as well. That's the one great thing with being an attorney I'm able to see and probably defend both sides. But what we have to look at is the fact that this is the man who's the Secretary of State for the United States of America. Exactly. Um, this There is very few opportunities and should be mm -hmm. far in between where you have your foot in your mouth, especially when we're talking about something as such a high magnitude as these terrorist acts. Um, and so, you know, I get the other side, but I think that moving forward, and I think this goes again to one of Kevin's point, when we just look at our current administration, these are serious issues. This is not just something you get up off the whim and just begin to share your heart with. That wasn't the moment to do that. And not a, not a great moment of communication. You know, and one of the lessons when you look at terrorism is that rarely is there any rationale for what these guys are thinking. They're irrational people by their very, uh, by definition. So you can't. But, but you have to know what's motivating them, what's triggering them to get to the root of why these people are wanting to commit these these. Horrific but, acts. Miranda, that's besides the point. The reality is these people are performing these acts. And so the blame has to fall squarely on them. It, it's, not, I'm, it's not about blame. It's understanding your enemy so you can defeat them. But is what my I'm my problem is the Secretary the of State of the United States doesn't understand that the threat doesn't care. Without Charlie Hebdo, if we let down our NSA and let down our defenses and we did not allow any speech, and you don't see a lot of writers in America drawing uh, uh, Muslim cartoons depicting Allah, right. they would still come here and bomb us all day long if they could. It's our way of life. It's the freedom that we enjoy and the fact that not, we're not bowing, bowing down to their caliphate. That's we'll why they want to We'll have to us. leave it there. I apologize, but we're running out of time. Chelsea and Kevin, thank you both for weighing in today during our roundtable. Great to have you.